The Fallout series is chock full of excellent DLC, better than most games I'd argue. A DLC's job is to take everything that made the base game good, and then build and improve upon that. And most of these DLCs do that. Most of them. That's why today, we're taking a look at and ranking every Fallout DLC. Before we get into the ranking, here's the criteria. I'm only going to be looking at the 3D games, minus Fallout 76. I'm not including 76 because A, I don't like it, and B, due to the game's live service nature, it's hard to constitute what's DLC and what's not. I'm also only including narrative driven DLC, so I'm not looking at expansions like Courier Stash or the Various Settlement DLC. Lastly, this is all just my opinion, so don't be a dick. With all that out of the way, on to the ranking. Sitting firmly in last place, we have Mothership Zeta from Fallout 3. Now I recently replayed Mothership Zeta on stream, <clears throat> shameless plug, <clears throat> live on YouTube, <clears throat> most nights a week. And before I started it, I remembered it just being okay, but not really that memorable. Well, let me tell you, I was wrong. Mothership Zeta was probably the least enjoyable Fallout content I've experienced since the launch of 76. It takes what could have been an interesting concept, f aliens, and somehow does nothing with it. Instead, it's just your run-of-the-mill corridor shooter with zero enemy variety and boring set pieces. Story-wise, I've seen Halo machinimas with a more cohesive narrative than this DLC. There are some cool ideas that are present, like the alien captives from different time periods, but, you guessed it, they do nothing with it. If I have to say anything positive about it, there are some segments that are visually appealing, like the spacewalk or the final battle, but 99% of what you'll be looking at is the same corridor, copy and pasted throughout the whole entire DLC. Mothership Zeta is one of only two Fallout DLC that I consider bad, and that brings us nicely to the next spot on our list. Operation Anchorage has a lot in common with Mothership Zeta when you take a closer look at the two. Both are good concepts for DLC that are unfortunately brought down by boring stories and lackluster game design. Anchorage sees you enter in a computer simulation of the Battle of Anchorage, one of the most important pre-war battles in the Fallout universe. Now this sounds really cool in theory. Pre-war America hasn't really been explored much in the franchise, so this could have been a perfect opportunity to explore this somewhat untouched time period. Instead though, we get a boring Call of Duty clone. I actually made a whole entire video dedicated to this DLC, but to sum it up, it's just a boring shooter that's only saving grace as it's short enough to not be as painful as Zeta. The only reason this is above Mothership Zeta is Anchorage seems to go by faster, and you get the best armor in the whole game. If you are going back to replay this one, don't expect too much from it. Next at number 10 we have Broken Steel, and I have mixed feelings about this DLC. While it's nowhere near as mediocre as the previous two, this never really should have been a DLC in the first place. For those of you that don't know, the ending of Fallout 3 left a lot of people disappointed. Broken Steel set out to amend these grievances and add a proper epilogue to the game. Now quality of the expansion aside, I've never been a fan of paying to get the actual ending of a game that I already bought. That alone immediately left a bad taste in some people's mouth. But how was the actual DLC? Well, it's alright. Broken Steel leans heavily into these big action set pieces and while they can be cool the first time you see them, it just seems like the game trying to be what it's not. Fallout 3 as a game is held together with tape and glue. These big set pieces just come across as pretty lame, that is if they don't crash your game completely. All that being said, the DLC really isn't that bad. It is really interesting to see the effects of Project Purity, and the Brotherhood missions are pretty good dumb fun as well. The DLC also raises the level cap from 20 to 30, which is cool if you're into that. My biggest complaint is that it doesn't do enough to set itself apart from base game Fallout 3. So much in fact that I sometimes actually forget about this DLC. Broken Steel is a fine expansion, just a bit on the mediocre side. At number 9 I have Automatron from Fallout 4. Now this might seem kind of low, but I want to make it clear that I do enjoy this DLC. In fact, from here on out, all these DLC are pretty good, but I have to put Automatron here. Starting off with the pros, the robot customization present here is top notch. The robots have always been one of the coolest aspects of Fallout, so I'll never complain about them getting more fleshed out. The Rust Devils as a faction are also a pretty cool addition to the game. My biggest issue with Automatron is the overall lack of content. See, Automatron has noticeably less content than the other Fallout 4 DLC, and to be fair it was priced accordingly, but it's still disappointing nonetheless. The main villain, the Mechanist, was pretty dull and didn't really have anything special going on for them. The lack of unique locations is also a real mark against this expansion. 
Automatron is a good, albeit short, Fallout 4 add-on that is definitely worth checking out. Next at number 8, I have Point Lookout, and I have a confession to make. I don't like this DLC as much as most people do. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I see a lot of Fallout fans hold Point Lookout in extremely high regards, but I just don't really see it. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the DLC, I just don't think it's all that great. On the positive side, I really do enjoy the setting. The town of Pilgrim's Landing is incredibly creepy and atmospheric, and the swamps of Point Lookout are a nice change of pace from base game Fallout 3. I love the eerie, Lovecraftian vibe the whole DLC gives off. The story is also a lot better than, say, Mothership Zeta or Operation Anchorage, but it always felt disjointed to me. It's almost like they had two or three concepts for this DLC that were cool, but they just decided to cram them all into one. There's really nothing that stands out as bad, it's just not one of the best in the series. I'd still recommend giving it a try though. Next at number 7, I have Honest Hearts. The first New Vegas DLC on the list, Honest Hearts has always come across as the weakest New Vegas expansion. That's not a knock on Honest Hearts though. Being the weakest New Vegas DLC is like being the worst player in the NBA. To start, I absolutely love the setting. The DLC takes place in Zion National Park, and it's like no other setting we've seen yet in Fallout. These games aren't known for being nice to look at, but Zion is really one of the most beautiful settings in the whole series. This DLC also has one of the best Fallout characters. Joshua Graham single-handedly carries this DLC on his back. If someone tells you they like Honest Hearts a lot, they most likely have him on their mind. This isn't meant to discredit the DLC, I enjoy it quite a bit still, but it's just weaker than the rest of the DLC above it. I enjoy the Tribal Warfare storyline, but I just can't justify putting Honest Hearts any higher on the list, as much as I may want to. At number 6, I have Nuka World. I want to start off by saying the concept of this DLC is one of the most unique in the whole entire series. The idea of having a Disneyland-esque theme park around Nuka-Cola is a great idea, and they pull it off really well. Speaking on the map itself, each of the unique areas are fun to explore and visually stand out from each other. The expansion also introduces a variety of new weapons, armor, and enemies. On the story side, it's pretty good. The raider aspect of it is very unique, and each gang is different enough from each other to stand out. It seems like you really have a say in how the ending pans out, especially compared to some of the other DLC on the list. There's really nothing more to say, it's just an all-around solid expansion. I guess if I had to name one negative, Porter Gage is one of the weaker companions in Fallout 4. Despite that, I'd still recommend hopping into Nuka World and giving it a try. Next at number 5, I have The Pit from Fallout 3. Now I haven't been too kind to the Fallout 3 DLC on this list, but I can safely say that The Pit is one of the best Fallout DLC of all time. Set in the ruined cities of Pittsburgh, The Pit sees a lone wanderer caught in between the conflict of the slaves and slavers, all while a dangerous disease is spreading in the background. To me, The Pit is everything the base game Fallout 3 should have been, and more. The story is great, the atmosphere is amazing, and most of the characters are really interesting. The main conflict of the DLC is slavers versus slaves, but it's a lot more nuanced than that. I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't played it, but a good case can be made for either side. This level of writing wasn't really present in the majority of Fallout 3, so it's more than welcome here. When it comes to gameplay, there's a pretty healthy variety here. You'll be doing anything from collecting steel ingots in the treacherous steel mill to fighting for your life in a makeshift arena. If you're only going to play one Fallout 3 DLC, and honestly, maybe you should, make it this one. It's genuinely a very well put together expansion that rivals even the base game at times, and definitely worth going back to. As we get to the top 4 spots on this list, it was really hard finalizing the placements of each of these last few DLC. Each of these DLC are the gold standard for expansions, and I could see any of these being number one on someone's list. That being said, I have to put Old World Blues at number four. One of New Vegas' DLC, Old World Blues sees a courier traveling to Big Empty, a pre-war research and development site. Once a place that was responsible for the most important innovations of all time, Big Empty is now full of crazed robotic scientists, dangerous lobotomites, and sentient brains. I'd say Old World Blues probably has the most gameplay variety out of any DLC thus far. You'll be doing anything from sneaking around pre-war schools, fighting giant robot scorpions, and battling giant dogs hopped up on drugs. It not only excels in the gameplay, but in the writing as well. The dialogue in this DLC is top notch. You can really tell the writers had fun. 
They really ride the line between it being amazing and annoying at times. I'm fine with the long dialogue sections of the expansion, I personally love it, but I could see how some people could find it tedious. Each character has their own unique personality that really makes them feel like interesting characters. Whether it's the scientist of the think tank or the appliances of the sink, each character is worth speaking to and learning about them. I don't really have that much negative to say about this DLC. I can see how the heavy dialogue could turn some people off of it, but that never really bothered me too much. Even though there is a lot of variety in Big Empty, the area as a whole can kind of blend together. All that being said, Old World Blues is still a fantastic DLC that is 100% worth playing. Next at number 3 I have Far Harbor from Fallout 4. To me, Far Harbor is everything Point Lookout should have been, and more. This is the best DLC Bethesda has ever made. Ever. Yes, even including these. Set on a fog-covered island off the coast of Maine, Far Harbor starts off as a simple missing person case before unraveling a deep, intricate plot. Speaking on the story, it's really good here. The expansion does a good job at fleshing out factions that never really had much death before, like the Children of Adam or the Institute. The crux of the story is the conflict between the Children of Adam, the citizens of Far Harbor, and the colony of Arcadia. There are multiple different endings depending on your choice. Each faction is so well written, you can really make a case for each of them. On the gameplay side of things, Far Harbor introduces a healthy variety of new enemy types like anglers and fog crawlers. The setting of Far Harbor is one of the best aspects of it. The nautical theme really helps it stand out from base game Fallout 4. The fog, a large irradiated, well, fog, is a really atmospheric addition and it changes how you move around the map. When it comes to the negatives, there is one huge stain on this DLC. What the f*** is this? Dima's memories are the worst quest in all of Fallout 4, by far. They completely screech the game pace to a halt, and they feel like they go on forever. Horrible quests aside, nearly everything else about this DLC is perfect. It's definitely peak Fallout 4, and I would highly recommend giving it a go. What can I say about Lonesome Road that hasn't already been said? It's the perfect epilogue for the New Vegas DLC. Ever since you started playing New Vegas and its expansions, there's been one constant. A complete side story about a man you know nothing about, but he knows you all too well. Every single moment has led to this. To say Lonesome Road is a high point in the Fallout series would be doing it a disservice. In order to talk about what makes this expansion great, we need to address the elephant in the room. I don't think it's too out there to say that Ulysses is one of the best characters in the whole series. He's essentially what makes this DLC. Even though Lonesome Road is the first time the players meet him, in a way, Ulysses has always been there. He lived amongst the White Legs of Zion. He met with a scientist of Big Empty. He even turned down a courier job, the same one that led the player character to their brush with death. In Lonesome Road, the courier will make their way through the Divide, a treacherous stretch of land that's been devastated by nuclear detonations and monumental earthquakes. It's an area that is personally tied to the courier, but you don't know how. Not yet, anyway. Let's talk about the Divide. As a setting, the Divide is almost as much of the character as Ulysses himself. The Fallout series has always preached the dangers of nuclear war, but no area better illustrates this than the Divide. The sheer amount of destruction here is almost daunting, and it's your job to navigate through this mess. Lonesome Road is a masterpiece of a DLC. I really appreciate that all the New Vegas DLC had this background story that led up to Lonesome Road. If I had to say one negative thing about it, the DLC is kind of on the linear side. But does it really matter? To me, this DLC is as close to perfect as you can get. No playthrough of New Vegas is complete until you play Lonesome Road. With all that being said though, it's not my number one pick. I almost put Lonesome Road at the top. It's an easy pick. There is one other DLC that I just enjoy so much more. Dead Money might be a controversial pick for number one, but just hear me out. No DLC makes you feel how they want you to feel better than Dead Money. The Sierra Madre is a beautiful backdrop for the whole expansion. It's equal part haunting and dangerous, so it's the perfect setting for Dead Money. It seems like the majority of people's complaints about dead money are directed towards the difficulty, and to that I say, get good. But really, dead money isn't that hard of a DLC. It's definitely harder than base game, sure, but it's a pretty forgiving expansion. It gives you the essentials you need to survive, but not enough for you to be comfortable. 
This is Fallout meets survival horror, a match made in heaven for me. Just look at the ghost people. They are some of the coolest and most terrifying enemies in the whole series. The big themes present in Dead Money are obsession, greed, and letting go. Frederick Sinclair was obsessed with bringing his casino to life. It was Vera Keys and Elijah's greed that eventually led to their downfall. Lastly, the player has to learn to let go, or the Sierra Madre will claim them as yet another victim. The story and characters here are all top-notch. Christine, Dean Domino, and Dog and God are some of the most memorable Fallout companions of all time. Elijah is an excellent villain as well. I love that you can actually learn about Elijah from Veronica in the base game. This just does a better job at making all of this feel connected. So, even though it's probably not what any of you expected, this is why I had to put Dead Money at number one. What's your favorite Fallout DLC? Do you agree with the list? Disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked the video, liking and subscribing really helps the channel out a lot. As always, I think that's it from me. Have a good day.